So the latest controversy around Gamergate is a controversial survey which was conducted by Rosalind Wiseman and Anthony Birch. The survey itself turned out to be completely unscientific and devoid of merit. They essentially just made an informal poll and passed it around on Twitter. And then they claim that their findings show that the majority of teenage boys doesn't actually want sexualized women in games and they want less bouncing boobies and less scantily clad armor and more playable female protagonists. And this seemed counterintuitive to me because when I was a teen boy, the last thing I really cared about was playing as girls or having less sexy characters. I wanted less clothes on them. So I decided to do a little research and, and look into this because what, what was so weird about the story wasn't the fact that some propagandist made a bunk study and talked about the findings. It was that this study was picked up and talked about by a bunch of big name journals. And strangely, even MTV News reported on the story. So let's jump into this. Here it says, Wiseman and Birch will share results and assessments of a national survey of both girl and boy gamers showing the use, attitudes, and impact of gaming on young people's social lives. It says, takeaway. Ever wonder what high schoolers think about your games, storyline, lack of women, and diverse protagonists? Come hear what Ashley Birch and Rosalind Wiseman have found after working with a national pool of girl and boy gamers and get an insight into the next generation of gamers slash game developers. So this event was specifically targeted for game developers and here she comes in writing in to use a bunk survey to, to try and convince the developers that no you don't want to sexualize characters boys don't really want that despite what gamergate says they don't really want that look at my study it's right here okay it continues Intended audience, game developers from all levels of the industry, individuals interested in social justice, parents, teachers, educators, and advocates. See, geared towards developers and social justice nuts. Anyways, moving on. When we look at the tweet history between Rosalind and Anthony, we can see that they actually knew that they were going to show the results to the GDC 2015 back on November 6, 2014. So when we look at this timing, they had already started this study by early November. It's pretty clear to see that this study was in total reaction to Gamergate itself. Because when Gamergate happened, basically, it was a cultural revolt. And everyone stood up and said, no, we don't want this social justice, radical leftism injected into our gaming. We don't want that. And it seemed like there were thousands of people coming out in support of Gamergate. So as a reaction, they had to come out and make a bunk study to say, no, those guys aren't, don't really matter. The teen boys actually want less boobs, guys. I swear, developers, they actually want less titties. So it's pretty clear to see that that's what happened when you look at the timing. But let's go a little more in depth. That the author of the original article which talked about this study was by Rosalind Wiseman herself and it was published on Time Magazine like I said but what's interesting here is she has another article that was published on Time Magazine back in 2012 it was titled what boys want and it was about how boys actually hate the quote hookup culture and how we don't actually like having sex with random girls or anything like that and how it's we're just sad about it how it's not what we really want da 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 you starting to see a pattern here both of these articles for time magazines were literally about what boys want and what sh what she says boys really want isn't what you know you normally think that boys really want it's not what boys even think they want because she knows better than everyone else so we have a 2012 article literally titled what boys want and a 2015 article also literally about what boys want and so it seems like she has an mo here and she just tells boys what they want but it's even clearer when we look at her biography on her personal site it states Rosalind Wiseman has only had one job since graduating from college to help communities shift the way we think about children and teens emotional and physical well-being. 
As a teacher, thought leader, author, and media spokesperson on bullying, ethical leadership, the use of social media, and media literacy, she is in constant dialogue and collaboration with educators, parents, children, and teens. Wait, let me go back and touch on the very first sentence of her biography again. Rosalind Wiseman has had only one job since graduating from colleges to help communities shift the way we think about children and teens' emotional and physical well-being. You notice that? When she says to help communities shift the way they think, well, in the English language, there is a word for that, and it's called subversion. In her very first sentence, she admits that she's a subversive agitator who thinks that she knows better than all of the rest of society. So maybe that explains why Rosalind has no problem using totally unscientific studies while acting like it was perfectly legitimate. Because it's all about just shifting the way we think. And the ends justify the means, so it's okay. But let's play devil's advocate here. Maybe Rosalind didn't know that if you advertise a poll on Twitter that it doesn't count as an actual scientific study. I mean, maybe she didn't know about the rigors of cultural anthropology research, or maybe she was just over her head and didn't know anybody to reach out to for help. Sorry, Rosalind. Both of those defenses can be easily cast aside by the following evidence and analysis. Let's look at these defenses separately. So, first, as to the defense that she doesn't know what good science actually is, well, it turns out Rosalind is no rookie to writing books on anthropology. She wrote a book dealing with girls' childhood challenges and bullies and all that, and that book turned out to be the basis for the movie Mean Girls, and she also wrote a book about boys bullying and challenges growing up in 2013. So she wrote a book to teach boys how to be boys and she wrote a book how to teach girls how to be girls but to prove that she's better and smarter than absolutely everyone she also published a book on how to be parents. But what's interesting is when we look at these books, when we look at the research that she used to support her views, guess what? She always relied on actual research. Here's a clip from CNET talking about her 2013 book. Wiseman's new book is about boys and parenting, not technology. But it wouldn't be possible to write a parenting book in 2013 without focusing on tech that kids use. On social networking, Wiseman cited the work of researcher Dana Boyd by pointing out that people do care about their privacy and want the ability to control who can see what they post, but they want to, quote, participate in a public place that's meaningful to them and their peers. Ah, okay. So when Wiseman needed real research to back up her book, she went to a real researcher to back up her claims. That researcher was Dana Boyd. Now, some of you might remember Dana from my three-hour documentary on Gamagate and its relationship to the educational reform and social justice industries. And of course, she is a personal friend of John McIntosh, who is the co-writer for Feminist Frequency and so on and so forth. So she's extremely tied to Microsoft Research and the MacArthur organization, as well as Mimi Ito and Joy Ito and all of them. But that's a separate issue. Let's focus on Dana Boyd's personal relationship to Rosalind Wiseman, the author of that article and the supposed, quote, researcher on that survey. I've already established that Wiseman is an admitted subversive manipulator who thinks they know better than everyone, and they do indeed know the difference between actual social science and Twitter polls, and they were even in touch with arguably the top tech culture anthropologist in the industry, Dana Boyd. But Let's play devil's advocate. Maybe Rosalind only got hooked up with Dana Boyd for help with her 2013 book by a publisher, and maybe she felt like they weren't really good enough friends to ask her for help with this survey or something. Well, not only were they both speakers at the 2013 Family Online Safety Institute convention, but together they make up two of the five people listed as the quote, good digital parenting advisors for the Family Online Safety Institute. So both Dana Boyd and Rosalind Wiseland are on the board together there. But we also have a long list of events and articles that Rosalind has done for the Family Online Safety Institute, dating back long before 2013. But that's just the business relationship between the two. To show that there's a strong personal relationship between Wiseman and Boyd, well, there's a long and personal tweet history, suggesting that they are very close friends. And Wiseman and Boyd are both very active with Fosse to this day. So they're both still working together. 
But let's go back and take a look at that 2013 Fosse conference where Dana Boyd and Wiseman were both keynote speakers. So three years ago, I began arguing with boys, debating boys, endless conversations with boys. Does that seem odd to you? Because we feel like boys don't talk. And we are messy. Conflict is inevitable. Abuse of power is inevitable. So to be the, the goal for us, and for many of you, I think in what we do in any kind of capacity that you're here today, is to be able to teach young people to be socially competent in extremely, in a very complex world. And those are not soft issues. Those are actually the most difficult and hard issues that adults and people ever face. How do you speak truth to power? How, when somebody is abusing power, how do you speak so that somebody takes you seriously or that you are able to not be silenced yourself? Hey, seems like she's supporting Gamergate here. She says that young people need to stand up against abuses of power and learn how to stand for their own freedoms and protect themselves, which is exactly what Gamergate did. But maybe she wasn't talking about gamers specifically here. How do we do that? And it doesn't matter if it's on a, on a football team, it doesn't matter how old you are or if you're a professional football player. It doesn't matter if you're a kid on a team. It doesn't matter if you are playing a video game. Oh, so I guess she was talking about Gamergate. Nice. It doesn't matter if you are texting. It is how you confront abuse of power. So this is my attempt to be able to reach boys with no barriers to entry, to be able to reach them and say, this has been done for you. But it has not just been done for, by me, right? Because as I said, woman, old, mom, right? The only way I was gonna be able to do this successfully, and the, the only way that I felt that I had the right to do this, was to bring young men into the fold. And so I went around the country and said, I don't wanna do interviews, that's not what I'm doing here. What I want is for young men to help me every step of the way, to vet every single page, and tell me what is it that I'm doing wrong? Well, for one, you're trying to pass off Twitter polls as legitimate science, but let's move on. Is my advice wrong? My experience, especially in social networking and video gaming, had dra has dramatically changed in the last two years. And in large part because of what the boys were telling me. I have to admit when my information is antiquated. I have to admit when my thinking has to change. And I believe strongly that when young people see that from authority figures, that that is transformational. That when we say we don't know, that we don't know exactly every way to manage the social networking stuff. We do not know. But what we do know are two things. People's dignity is not negotiable. Dignity means to be worthy. You have to have the right to have your voice heard. So dignity is not negotiable for you or for other people, and it is absolutely fundamentally tied to our social contract of how we manage with each other. So if that's the case, why are you trying to take the voice away from gamers saying they're all just misogynist shitlords? If that's the case, why are you trying to take a voice away from white people saying that they're just oppressors? If that's the case, why are you trying to take the voice away from men saying that they're just oppressors? If that's the case, why are you trying to take the voice away from straight people saying they're just oppressors? And if you're any combination of those three, or all of them, according to the social justice crowd, you deserve absolutely zero voice and zero dignity. So, I don't believe a damn word you say, Roslyn. It is also the case, as I said, that conflict is inevitable and abuse of power is inevitable. So our goal is to be able to teach you to be socially competent with a bedrock understanding of dignity. And we are gonna admit, as adults, when we are inconsistent in the, in the mistakes that we make, and we are also going to admit that sometimes we act very hypocritically. Is that so? And here's another interesting excerpt from one of the Fosse articles written about Wiseman, which is rather telling. It says, Rosalind Wiseman is an internationally recognized expert on children, teens, parenting, bullying, social justice, and ethical leadership. So she's an expert on social justice, but apparently, passing off garbage science as a real study does not qualify as unethical leadership to her. Good to know where she stands, at least. But now let's look at a different connection I found here. Remember the beginning when I said that the bogus survey was also parroted by MTV News? Sounded a little weird, right? 
Well, remember I said Dana and Rosalind make up two of the five good parenting advisors to the Family Online Safety Institute, but coincidentally, one of the other five is listed as Nupur Agarwal. Her bio on the Fosse site reads, Nupur Agarwal is Vice President of Public Affairs for MTV, the world's premier youth entertainment brand, and MTV's 24-hour college network, MTVU, which reaches nearly 9 million students across 750 campuses nationwide. In this role, she oversees the strategy and execution of major quote, pro-social campaigns to engage and activate America's youth on the biggest issues impacting their generation. Please note, this is the same Agarwal who recently won an Emmy for being a producer on the transsexual agenda pushing show, The T Word. And who wants to place a bet that Agarwal ends up listed as a producer on the upcoming highly racist and divisive show, White People on MTV? I'd put my money on it. And it turns out, Agarwal and the illegal immigrant host of that show, White People, were both speakers at the quote, digital activism panel for the 2012 South by Southwest convention. So seems like they already know each other. <laughs> it's probably how they met. So as we've seen, Rosalind Wiseman admits she's just out to change culture and she clearly knows the difference between good science and bad science. So it's pretty clear that she, in order to change culture, she used bad science to try and push her agenda. That doesn't seem ethical whatsoever, Rosalind, and I don't think you should be able to speak for ethical authority. And furthermore, not only did she know the difference between good science and bad science, but if she wanted the study done properly, she could have easily reached out to someone to do it but she knows darn well that any legitimate study simply wouldn't show what she wanted to show. <laughs> because, hate to say it, but sex sells, and teen boys are the most sexualized of the bunch, so just how it is. Stay tuned everybody, there's a lot more to come.